in previous videos we saw that the position of a particle undergoing simple harmonic motion can be modelled by a sinusoidal function. The sinusoidal function has the form a sine of omega t plus phi or if you like a cos omega t plus phi. a, omega and phi are constants, they don't change. We saw that for the case of a mass on a spring omega is given by the square root of k over m or k is the spring constant. We've been talking about masses on springs but there are other situations that can be modeled by simple harmonic motion. In those cases k would not would mean something quite different. Let's look at the position of this mass as a function of time. So here the mass is in its equilibrium position. We're going to look at its position or displacement. So we start by displacing it from its initial position. We can do that by dragging it down from its equilibrium position or pushing it up and then releasing it. So let's suppose we release it from here. So you can see the position vector this is x of t. So the position of the mass can be positive or negative. When the mass is above the equilibrium position it's positive. When the mass is below it's negative. So this is the sinusoidal function and the graph that we saw in earlier videos. There's no friction here so this mass will continue oscillating up and down indefinitely. So x of t is really a vector. It can be positive or negative. You can see for this particular time x of t is positive. It's a point above the t-axis. But for other times x of t can be negative. And x of t varies according to a sinusoidal function, function of this form. An interesting fact about a mass undergoing simple harmonic motion is that its position x or displacement can be modelled by the motion of a particle in a circle. So let's see that. So let's set this mass in motion. This point on the circle is moving with constant speed. So we're talking about uniform circular motion here. The speed is uniform. Of course, the speed of the mass is not uniform. The mass is accelerating. The speed is um, changing all the time. Of course, the point on the circle is also accelerating because it's changing direction, but its speed is constant. So here I have frozen the motion at a particular instant. I have frozen the motion of the mass when the mass is at its maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. This maximum displacement is known as the amplitude of the motion. It's A in the formula for X. In earlier videos I explained to you that sine function lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So a times this sine function lies between minus a and plus a. It's actually the height here is a. The range of this function is from minus a to plus a. So the radius of this circle is equal to the amplitude of the motion of the mass. And all we do then is project the tip of the position vector onto this circle of radius A. And as the tip of the position vector moves up and down, you can see that we have a point on a circle undergoing uniform circular motion in a circle of radius A, radius equal to the amplitude of this mass. 
let's see the connection between the simple harmonic motion of this mass and the uniform motion of this point on a circle of radius a. Well, we know that this vector here has a magnitude of a. This vector here is actually the position vector of the projection of this point onto this circle of radius a. We saw in the applet that this vector of radius a rotates with constant angular velocity. We know that the position vector of the mass is called x of t. We can construct a right angle triangle with this line as hypotenuse. So this distance here is x of t, which we know is, has the form a sine omega t plus phi. This will all make sense if we make this angle in here be omega t plus phi. By basic trigonometry, the sine of this angle is the side opposite this angle, which is x of t, divided by the hypotenuse, which is a. In other words, the side opposite omega t plus phi is a multiplied by the sine of omega t plus phi. a sine omega t plus phi is indeed x of t. So that much makes sense. Now we want to see how this angle is changing with time. Is it changing uniformly with time? To do that, we have to get the derivative of this angle with respect to time. Well, the derivative of omega t with respect to t is just omega. We just have a constant times t. The derivative of phi with respect to time is zero. So the rate of change of this angle with respect to time is constant. And the constant is omega. So Every second, omega radians are swept out. So we have an angular speed of omega radians per second. So we have a point moving with constant angular speed omega. From uniform circular motion, we know that the speed of a point on the circle moving at constant Unif well, uniform circular motion is the radius of the circle times omega. Well, the radius of this circle is a, so the speed of this point is omega times a. Now let's look at the velocity of the mass, and we can actually connect up the velocity of this mass with the speed of this point on the circle. To get the velocity of the mass, we differentiate the position of the mass with respect to time. We get dx dt. So we just use the chain rule here. The derivative of the sine function is cos. And if we differentiate this angle, we get omega. So we multiply omega by a cos omega t plus phi. We know that the cos function, just like the sine function, lies between minus 1 and plus 1. That means that if we multiply all of this inequality by omega a, we will see that omega a cos omega t plus phi lies between minus omega a and plus omega a. But of course, this is just v of t. So this tells us that the velocity of the mass lies between minus omega a and plus omega a. So the maximum velocity of the mass is omega a. But that's equal to the velocity of the point on the circle, the point being the projection of the tip of the position vector.